Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ, bless. This is Captain Azariah. I'm here with another 15 minutes with the captains. To my right, I got Officer Danyala reading, and today we're going to talk about dealing among the other nations or dealing among the nations. Uh, as we know, we here in captivity, and we know that these other nations are the devil that the Bible speaks of, but we still have to know how to maneuver and how to move when it comes to dealing with these other nations, whether it be at our job, whether it be family members, things of that nature. So we're going to get right into it. Give me Romans, the 12th chapter. We're going to start at the 18th verse. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 18. Come on. If it be possible, as much as it li- as as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. So the Bible teaches us, as much as it lies in us, be peaceable with all men. Now, I already hear the Christian mind state, the, 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 uh, the, the Christian thought of live peaceably with all men. That ain't talking about conform to the other nations. That ain't what it's talking about. That ain't talking about invite them to you. you here it is. They, they, you got them coming to the Sabbath. You got them over at your house. All the other nations. That, that's your circle is the other nations. That ain't what it's talking about when it says live peaceably with all men. Matter of fact, hold that. Give me uh, Revelations 18 and 4. Let's prove that first. Because we're going to talk about the live peaceably with all men. It ain't talking about conforming to their ways. Read that. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 4. Come on. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Come out of her. The her that you're reading is Babylon, America, the captivity we in. It says, come out of her, my people. Come on. That ye be not partakers of her sins. That ye be not partakers in her sins. What are the sins of, of this place? The sins of breaking God's commandments. Christmas, that's her sins. Right. Her ideologies. Her, her philosophies. This captivity's philosophy. So living peaceable with all men does not mean conforming to their doctrines. Conforming to their Christianity. Their religions. What it's talking about is how you deal. How you maneuver when dealing with the other nations. And because we in captivity. Right. This ain't our kingdom. Watch this. Go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Christ explained to us how to maneuver. Saying the same thing to Paul, be living peaceable with all men. Give me that. Matthew, the 10th chapter, start at verse 16. And then we're going to get some examples of our forefathers and how they dealt and how they maneuvered and dealt with the other nations that we can apply to our lives and our everyday walks. Because many of us, we got Esau at the job. You got the other nations at the job. You got and you know he the devil. Right. But you got to know how to deal with him. Because you don't want to get fired. You still got to provide for your family, things of that nature. Read that. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 10. Verse 16. Come on. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. He's, Christ said, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Remember, wolves want to do what to sheep? Eat them alive, destroy them, ravage them. Christ said, I sent you, uh, behold, I sent you uh, uh, as sheep in the midst of wolves. Read. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. So because of that. Christ is letting us know we got to be wise as serpents. We got to use wisdom. We got to know how to maneuver when it comes in our captivities. It says be wise as serpents. Come on. And harmless as doves. And harmless as doves. That's that be ye peaceable of all men. Right. We're going to get some examples of our forefathers on how they moved as, and how they were harmless as doves. Uh, or how they were har- uh, harmless as doves and wise as serpents. Matter of fact, give me Acts, the 26th chapter. Let's give an example. Be ye, har- uh, be ye wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. Paul, our forefather Paul, has one of the greatest examples on how to deal with these other nations. In, in our captivity. Give me Matthew's the 26th chapter, and we're going to start at verse 2. This is the book of Acts, chapter 26. In verse two, because I know a lot of y'all, you be at your jobs, you be, you, uh, you see Esau in the store, any, any other nations, and you just want to go straight blast mode, cuss them out, you the damn devil that the Bible speaks of, and then you wonder why you always getting fired, <laughs> you wonder why opportunities don't come your way, right, and things of that nature. I'm saying we are in captivity. We got bills to pay. We, we, we want doors to be open. We want opportunities to be open to us for us to be able to further push this truth to the four corners of the earth. Because ultimately the goal is us getting the kingdom. Because right. we know where they're going. So why not be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove? Like our forefather Paul. Read that. Verse 2. The book of Acts chapter 26 verse 2. Matter of fact, two. start at verse 1. Verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. 
Then Paul stretched forth his, the hand and answered for himself. Understand the example of Paul. Remember, Agrippa was uh, of the other nations, the Idumia, Rome. He was the one that was set up over the Jews. It says, Agrippa said unto Paul, because remember, the remember the history that was going on, remember our own people wanted the, the Jews, the, those Pharisees, those, those scribes and Pharisees wanted to kill Paul. So Paul basically was locked up. There was a Roman uh, 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 a soldier that helped him out, got him locked up, and he wanted to be go to basically appeal to Caesar because he was a Roman citizen. He had that authority to appeal to Caesar. This is him using that wisdom. You know, if I deal with my own people, they're going to kill me. Right. But let me, let, me, let me use wisdom. I'm going to appeal to Caesar. Now he's in front of Agrippa and, and li listen to his countenance. It says, then Agrippa said unto Paul, thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hands. You got to visualize this. Paul stretched forth his hands. He's like, Agrippa. Paul stretched forth his hands and answered for himself. Read. I think myself happy. He said, I think myself happy. Come on. King Agrippa. King Agrippa. Keep in mind, this is a heathen. This is of, uh, of another nation. He says, I think myself happy, King Agrippa. Come on. Because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all, all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. He said, I'm happy that I'm coming before you, Agrippa, to basically uh, to answer for myself this day before you, touching all things concerning the Jews. Why, Read. Right? Especially because I know thee to be the expert, to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Listen to what he's saying about Agrippa. He says, I'm happy I've come before you, Agrippa, because I know you are an expert in all things touching the Jews. Now let's let's keep in mind, is Agrippa an expert no. <laughs> in touching all things the Jews? Hell no. He buttering them up. But this is Paul using wisdom. Right. This is Paul used being wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, because he locked up right now. He's trying not to get killed. He's trying to save his life, so he's maneuvering. And the same thing with us at our job. Sometimes you, we ain't, you don't compromise for God's commandments. That's not what it's saying, because you don't see Paul compromising for God's commandments when you read, uh, as we read on. But he's using wisdom and knowing how to speak and how to deal with these other nations to position himself. Read on. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. He says, wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Jump down to verse 22. Now, as Paul begins to speak and basically explain the matter of what was going, how he was going forth, teaching uh, repentance, teaching Christ, going to the Gentiles, things of that nature. And they sought to basically the scribes, the, the, the Jews sought to kill him. Jump down to verse 22. Watch this. He says this while he's, while he's bringing all that out. He states this. Listen to what Paul says. Read. Acts chapter 26, verse 22. Having therefore obtained help. And this, this scripture right here is how you know Agrippa was, did not, was not an expert in all things concerning the customs of the Jews. Read. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and, and Moses did say should come. He's letting them know, I ain't, I, look, I ain't said nothing other than what the prophets and Moses said should come. What did the prophets and Moses say concerning Agrippa? Destruction. Mm. Captivity. But he's using wisdom. He's woeing Agrippa over because he already butted Agrippa up in the beginning of the chapter. Oh, most, most noble King Agrippa. <laughs> now, I'm glad that I'm so happy to see you because you are an expert in all things concerning the Jews. Jump down to verse 24. Verse 24. No, no, no. Read on, read on. Verse 23. Verse 23. That Christ should suffer and that he should be, be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people. Show light unto the people, read. And to the Gentiles. And to the Gentiles. See, that word messes them up. Mm. Gentiles. That's that wisdom. Because is he talking about the other nations right there? No, he ain't talking to those with wisdom and understanding. No, he ain't talking about all nations right there. He's talking about the scattered of our people. <laughs> but to uh, Agrippa, he's like, yeah, yeah, Gentile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read on. <laughs> Verse 24. And as he, and, and, excuse me, and as he thus spake, for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee... Now here come Festus. He's like, Paul, you beside yourself. Much learning has made you mad. You crazy, Paul. Read on. Much learning doth make thee mad. 
But he said. But listen to what Paul says. Listen to the countenance. Listen to the wisdom of Paul. Read. But he said, I am not mad. I'm not crazy. Read. Most noble Festus. Most noble Festus. I'm not mad. Read. But speak forth the words of truth and soberness. I speak forth the words in truth and soberness, most mighty one, most noble, uh, most noble Festus. Understand, Paul is using wisdom. Why? Because he is bound right now and he ain't trying to get put to death. He's trying to get out of these chains. He's trying to get out. He's trying to basically wiggle his way up out the situation he is. Right. That's wisdom. Some of y'all know, some, I'm telling you, some people be at their job right now cussing the Edomite out and wonder why they ain't getting the promotion or wonder why they ain't moving up in certain certain areas, wonder why they can't better themselves, or wonder why there's so many problems that goes on when it comes to the workplace and dealing with the other nation because you're not applying wisdom. This is a prime example right here. Read on. Verse 26. Verse 26. Watch this. Read. For the king knoweth of these things. He said, I'm not. <laughs> Listen, he's still buttering Agrippa up. He says, Festus, I'm not dumb. I'm not mad. I'm not crazy. Because the king, he knows of all these things. Right. Read on. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. That's why, that's why before him I speak freely. Because he knows everything that I'm talking about. He knows everything that I've just brought out. Now, does Agrippa know every, all that? No, he don't. But right. watch this. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden, for, uh, hidden from him. Festus, nothing is hidden from King Agrippa. He's most wise. He, once again, what is he doing? He putting that battery in his back. He buttering him up. So now Agrippa looking at Paul like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I like this dude right here. Yeah, I, I can deal with Paul right here. He, he good. I like him. He's right. I am, I am mighty and powerful. I know all things. You are exactly right. He's playing on his pride. He's using that wisdom. Read on. For this... For this thing was not done in a corner. Mm. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? Now he asks him, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? Watch what Agrippa say, read. I know that thou believest. I know what you believe, uh, 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 Agrippa. You believe the prophets? Read. Then Agrippa said unto Paul. Then Agrippa said unto Paul. Watch this, read. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. He said, Agrippa's like, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian, Paul. Man, you good. I, <laughs> you almost persuaded me. Now, now watch the wisdom of Paul. Here's the point, read. And Paul said. Now listen to what Paul says. Come on. I would to God. He said, I would to God, read. That not only thou. That not only thou. But also all that hear, this, hear me this day. That all that hear me this day, read. Were both, were both almost and all together such as he I He said, am. I wish everybody, I wish you and everybody that hears me was just like I am, read. All, and all together such as I am, read. Except these bonds. Except these chains. Except these chains. Understand what he's saying? So I wish, yeah, you right, Agrippa. I wish all, all, thou and everybody was like me. Except these chains. <laughs> he's weighing on Agrippa because why? He got them right where he want them. He done buttered them up. I'm telling you, this is wisdom right here. Right. I'm telling you, this is wisdom on how to deal with these other nations in our captivity. Because all Paul is trying to do, Paul is not doing this for his own personal gain. He, understand, that's the point too. Matter of fact, hold that. Give me uh, um, a Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, real quick. Last scripture, Proverbs 3 and 31. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 31. Come on. Envy thou not the oppressor. Because we're not envying the oppressor. We're not, we, we don't, you don't, you don't deal wisely to, to get what the other nations have. We're not, you, Paul wasn't doing this to try to get some type of stature among the other nations or try to position himself to where he can, like, like you, uh, like you read in the Maccabees with Jonathan. We don't envy the oppressor. Right. You, you deal wisely with your nation, with the other nations so that you can benefit your nation. Read on. And choose none of his ways. Choose none of his ways. So with that, that's another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I pray that y'all learn something from this Israel. Shalom, most high in Christ. Bless. Shalom, shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission.
Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how we're men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth.